So something really strange is happening with Outriders right now, and it's actually really good news for this as a game and as a franchise. We're going to be talking about that in just a moment. Plus, we're going to be also talking about potential new character classes we could be seeing as future DLC. Some exciting stuff there, so let's dive in right now. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here. Hope you're doing good, and let's do this. So, if we take a look at the Outriders meta score right here. It sits at 76 on PC, of course, and the user score is 5.8. And you guys know I did a recent video about Angry Joe, who did his review of Outriders, giving a 5 out of 10. And you can see there's a lot of people that actually agree with this review. However, despite all of this, check this out right here. Outriders soars up sales charts despite launching on Xbox Game Pass. The game had the third spot on both the PlayStation and Xbox sell charts for the month. That is absolutely incredible. Despite the issues the game has been facing through launch connectivity, uh, you know, of course, we went through the inventory wipe issues. This game is definitely having some staying power for sure. And again, if you look at the Reddit numbers, the sustainability with the community is absolutely incredible considering what we have endured as a community. So we're going to dive into this article right here from GameSpot a bit more. Let's take a look at to see what they had to say. They say this, the NPD group has published its U.S. game sales report for March 2021, and they seem to further confirm that a game's inclusion on Xbox Game Pass does not doom its sales. Outriders, a surprise hit that launched day and date on the service, still managed to put up impressive numbers on Xbox, and according to the charts, it actually performed similarly to the PlayStation version. My God. Does Outriders manage to take the third spot on the Xbox top sellers list for March 2021, trailing only Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War? That's always on the top list, isn't it? This put it above other huge games like Madden NFL 21 and Forza Horizon 4, both of which are also available on Xbox Game Pass. The game actually came out on April 1st, but the sales data extended to April 3rd, meaning it did this in just a few days. It could very well stay on, stay high on the list for the next month as well. That is incredible. It goes on to say this, but Outriders also managed to take the third spot on the PlayStation charts, only trailing Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Spider-Man Miles Morales, while actually beating Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Outriders was third on the all-platform charts as well, and because many of the games on that list are from the last year, it's likely to climb even higher. So that also tells you one thing as well. They released this game at the perfect time. That's another thing. They timed this game so well with the release, and uh, yeah, I'm personally super impressed with how the team has really responded to the problems the game has had. The game has been out over two weeks now, and yes, it has had a rough start for sure, but you gotta remember, there have been huge games, franchises that have had rough starts, including the likes like GTA Online. That game, you couldn't even hardly play it for the first month, month and a half. Uh, so given that we're in the situation that we're at now with Outriders, you know, I personally think this franchise has a very, very bright future. Now, the article goes on to say the following, given the franchise's huge popularity, it shouldn't be a big surprise that Monster Hunter Rise took the top spot for Nintendo Switch March 2021 chart, and it's the only game Nintendo didn't publish on the list at all. Super Mario 3D World, Browser Furio, Fury, okay, so we have a bunch of Nintendo news in here as well, which I don't think Outriders is on Nintendo Switch. Uh, now they say this, as far as hardware is concerned, the PS5 continues its record-setting pace uh, through five months, fast-selling console in U.S. history, both in terms of dollar. Okay, so PS5 is dominating, it sounds like. Now, if you look here, you have March 2021 bestsellers for all platforms in the U.S., and you can see how Outriders is contending here with some absolutely heavy hitters, including Assassin's Creed, uh, the likes of Minecraft. It's right up there with some of the best of the best. So, yeah, if Square Enix ignores this, as a franchise, that'd be a huge mistake. In my opinion, they need to get together and really uh, come up with a strategy around Outriders as a fra franchise and treat this like their baby, their new baby, uh, for sure, because this is a special franchise, in my opinion. Now, what about the future? Uh, let's talk about DLC. What we do know is that it's likely we would be getting 
big expansions for this game. There'll be paid expansions, of course. There's not going to be any live service, uh, you know, type support for this game, which some people think that's actually a mistake. Some people say, hell no, I want big expansions like uh, the time of, you know, the old school games like Diablo and that sort of thing. So we have an article right here that says this, Outriders, the case for new playable classes in DLC. There's a strong case for people can fly in Square Enix to continue investing in Outriders by adding new classes or classes with DLC. So this is something they could actually consider doing. Like, uh, I guess you would say a medium-sized DLC uh, in between their big expansions. Get a class out and then a big, big expansion with story levels. Um, maybe another class or something like that. Let me know if that's something that would interest you or do you think it should just be one big DLC that you get like in a year? All right, so the article goes on to say this. What Outriders DLC classes could entail? Let me know what you guys would actually like to see. They can do anything with this, by the way. Uh, they say this, of course, that begs the question of what new Outriders DLC classes could actually entail. There's a pretty wide net cast already. The Technomancer, of course, you have the Pyromancer, the Trickster, Devastator. And then while there's strong spread, there's other areas that could be filled in with the RPG-esque classes. While the Technomancer is too a summoner of sorts, this is all focused on machinery. A Beastmaster class in Outriders would be interesting to see come into action given the wildlife found in, on Enoch. Perhaps it would be able to summon some of these creatures to attack enemies, have natural nature abilities, excuse me, that include vine trap, grabs, and movements, and general bonuses regarding the wildlife on the knock. The argument could be made that the connection wouldn't make sense with the uh, confine of the story, but at the same time, the anomaly is exactly what his players uh, with these powers, establishing a deeper connection between the player and Anak could just be taken more literally in this case. So would you guys like to see some sort of Beastmaster class like we've seen in Borderlands 3? That would be pretty cool. Honestly, so I have my own opinions on what I would personally like to see. I want to see more of a guerrilla style melee class, like super melee sentry class that also has some cool melee weapons. But then again, that would be a little bit complicated to develop for because then you have to consider if you're gonna have melee weapon drops, you have to, you know, apply that to everything in the game. So perhaps they could actually introduce melee weapon drops in the future. I personally think that would be really cool to see. Let me know if you guys would agree on that one. Now, the article furthermore says the following. A Beastmaster would likely join the Technomancer in mastering long-range aspects of Outriders, so the Pyromancer really needs an ally in the mid-range aspect. Perhaps notably, the game builds on the five elements of Hinduism quite well. Uh, and then you have all of this right here. Let's see, it says Bumi, Tajas, uh, if I pronounce this wrong, my apologies, Jala and Varum, which represents, of course, all of the elements, I suppose. Now it says, a mid-range class focused on the other two, Marit, Er, at Akash, could fit some sort of gravity manipulation, increased movement speed, wormholes like Apex Legends, Horizons, Ultimate, and more could all complement mid-range gameplay with, of course, more treats added. So yeah, I think it's safe to say there's a lot they can do with DLC, especially when it comes to the classes. So again, sound off as to what you guys would like to see in the very near future. Now, on the flip side of this, you could also see them expand the current classes with even more subclasses or something like this. Now they've done this with, of course, Destiny 2 and many other games as well. So that could potentially be something that they could be looking at as something as DLC in between bigger content drops. So if that's something that uh, sounds really cool, please let me know in the comments down below. Mentioning comments, it's time to go over your top comments. So be sure to leave a comment down below because we're going to go over them right now. This was the recent video I did. It's called Yikes, Angry Joe Strikes Again, Big Patch in Development and More. So yeah, Angry Joe, of course, did his review. He gave it like a 5 out of 10 for Outriders, which of course, if your people can fly and you see that sort of thing, that's got to hurt. However, on the flip side, this game has done exceptionally well. Obviously, let's see what you guys had to say about this right here. Adam says this, at this point, every single game release from here on might as well be labeled early access. No kidding. I mean, it would be the safest thing to do. At least you would manage your community's expectations going forward. Uh, you know, that's what I would do. If I was a, you know, 
game developer and I knew in this day and age that there were so many online games releasing with problems. First of all, I would probably have an offline option. But if I was an online game, I would know, hey, our game is likely going to have problems. We should probably maybe put an early access label on there for now and then go from there. Uh, now, the Laughing Joke Network says the Pyromancer has a second win kind of perk in the Tempest skill tree. Nice. Uh, Lyra Sniper says this, 5 out of 10 fair play, finally decided to try playing again since I haven't heard news of anything terribly bad happening anymore. Crashed three times quickly while trying to level my trickster. The first crash, I didn't even get to sign in. So you can see where, you know, how the experience differs from person to person. There's actually a funny meme, uh, out on the subreddit about this. If we take a look at it, SMFG Life says this. There are four types of players on this game. Which one are you? And you can see this player here. I finished another solo uh, challenge tier 15 and got no legendaries. You're soloing challenge tier 15. I can't even get past challenge tier 10 without co-op. And then uh, we have this player who says, I don't even know how to get to world tier 15. And then this one, you guys are able to log in. I'm stuck on the menu screen. <laughs> so this is right now the Outriders community. And you can see how it differs from person to person. You have one person that's like, I have hardly run into any bugs. And then, you know, you look at Angry Joe's review and you can see that this meme is so true. Like he was the one in particular that was dealing with all of the issues, uh, you know, and then some of them, of course, all of them have their own issues, but he in particular, I noticed was dealing with a lot of the uh, core problems uh, with his game. And that's the problem with uh, games like this. And that's why, again, I go back to the early access uh, label. Now, let's keep going. Um, James says this, Honestly, it's a weird time. I played the demo for a whole month before the game came out and didn't get a single bug. But now it's like a patchwork and bugs still persist. It's weird, isn't it? Gamer Guy says this, I just said that two days ago on Twitter. They should 100% put the game into early access. Paul says, making a bigger dot when you are blind firing, even giving us option to make it a different color would be great as well. I've heard that feedback time and time again. I really hope they consider having some sort of reticule customization in the future. That would be really nice. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. That does it for another Outriders news update. So yeah, this game is still going strong despite there being issues, of course. Uh, but overall, I think like if you play it single player or try to, it's um, a lot more stable, at least in my opinion. And I have had a lot of fun actually playing more recently co-op, at least with one other player. So I'll keep you guys updated as to my personal experience. But my issues so far have been kind of minimal. Uh, so compared to other game releases that I have covered, that's my personal experience. Hopefully it doesn't change. Hopefully the inventory wipe issues are uh, completely gone with this game. Um, I just want more legendaries, like legendaries that I actually want to keep. Right now, I feel like I'm more attached to my purple weapons than anything else, which is really weird. Uh, but anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Outriders news updates and open world gaming goodness. And I will see you all next time. Take care.